Here are five questions we have after watching Star Trek Discovery Season 1. I'm Andy Hartup and I'm joined by Lauren O'Callaghan. Hello. So the first question is, is the Starfleet Klingon war over now? That was quick. Yeah, um, I don't really get why the war's over. Like, they put Laurel in charge, effectively, giving her the bomb. It gave her the power to, you know, take the Klingons in hand and unify them. But why does that mean that the war's finished? Because Laurel and, and Vok and everyone, they still wanted to have a war with the Federation. They just wanted the Klingon side to be united, so... I, I think uh, it sort of boils down to the fact that um, the war as it was is sort of like a... Not motiveless, but there was no unified vision for why the Klingons were at war with Starfleet. It was all each of the individual houses blowing shit up to make themselves look cool, to make themselves look really, really strong. So I think um, by uniting the houses, it's a weird kind of logic, but by uniting the houses, they realise that there isn't like a core reason for them to be at war with Starfleet. No one's tr like vying for power because they're all united under Laurel. So there's no need for them to show off their displays of strength anymore by blowing up star bases. So I think that's probably why they decided the war was over. I admit, it's really flimsy. Like, really, really flimsy. Yeah, I feel like you've thought about that for a long, long time and come up with a, yeah, logical answer. But it feels quite complicated. It feels like a bit of a stretch. I'm not sure the Klingons have thought that much about it. And, like... They're all about kind of, you know, not necessarily war, but like showing their strength and, and, and defeating their supposed enemies. Whether the logical reason for that is gone or not, it just feels a bit weird that everyone would just back off just because they were unified. Mm, I think, like, if, uh, I mean, I'm inferring all this. Like, I'm, I'm being a bit generous towards the show here, but maybe... They've got some sort of agreement in place with Laurel that says, you know, we're letting you do this. We're letting you take control of the Klingons, but you need to make sure that they don't go to war with us anymore. Mm. And obviously she's not going to advertise the fact that she's essentially a Starfleet puppet. Mm. But, I mean, you know, she gets what she wants. She gets to fulfill her destiny and Takuvma's um, ambition by uniting all the Klingons. And she's got the power over them. She can blow up Kronos. But she has agreed that, you know, do it under the condition that you don't obliterate Starfleet. I think, I mean, if you took it even further, she might have a lot more trouble uniting the Klingon houses if there's no enemy for them to sort of bicker against. Because otherwise what they're going to start doing is bickering among themselves. So while they're not actually fully at war with Starfleet, they're still their enemy and still sort of, they're a focus of their aggression. Yeah, I can kind of... I can get it as a short-term measure. I can mm. absolutely see how it's happened. But in my mind, it is just a, sh a short-term measure. Mm -hmm. Like, once the unification of the houses is complete and everyone's used to that, like, the Klingon Empire being what it is or what Laurel wants it to be, in my mind, they're just going to be like, well, OK, well, now we need to, you know, push forward the Klingon Empire. So back to war with the Federation then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that could well be the case. Um you know, there's a, there's a little period of respite. We don't exactly know how long it is between like when Laurel unifies the houses and when Star Trek Discovery Season 1 ends. It doesn't seem like a long period of time. They seem mm. to be straight back into things. So who knows, maybe Season 2 will be, hey, we're at war with the Klingons again, but we've got the Enterprise here with us. <laughs> so another question we have after watching all of Star Trek Discovery is who's going to be Discovery's new captain? Lorca. Well, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my um, my personal preference is getting ahead of me. Yeah, if you haven't seen the show, Lorca's dead. Also, he wasn't human, he was Terran. He was sort of a bad guy. He wasn't trained in the Federation. It was all a ruse. Basically, it's not going to be Lorca. Yeah, but he's cool. Yeah, but it's not going to be him. <laughs> Let um, it go. <laughs> uh, I think there's an outside possibility they could bring him back in some sort what? of weird time traveling gone to pick up the original Lorca who's died on the Baran because this the mis the, the events surrounding his death are mysterious I mean basically the fans love him and want him back so that's the only real reason why they'd build it in and I admit myself it's an outside shot You're living it would on be a cool dream if he came back you're right? living on a dream there but uh -huh. I, I just think I get what you're saying I love the character of Lorca too he was amazing but I just, I think as much as I would want that character back, I'd be disappointed to see the show do that because it does feel like a bit of a cop-out 
that they'd be doing just for the fans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at the same time as well, like even if they did work it in that way, there's he wouldn't be the same character because he wouldn't be Terran Lorca with the same motivations. He would be, you know, the Federation's version of Lorca. Who knows who that guy is? Maybe he's not cool at all. Maybe he's like a bit weird. A bit weird. A bit weirder. A bit of a loner. A bit weird. Um, so that guy, okay, maybe not. We know that at the end of the show they're on their way to Vulcan to pick up their new captains, so there's one already in place for them to pick up. Uh, when they get interrupted, they get the distress, distress call along the way. So in, in terms of who it could be if they're casting a new captain, I mean, anyone, right? Yeah, could literally be anyone, anyone. Literally anyone. Mm. Um, I was kind of hoping it would be Saru, just because mm. he's done such a good job as captain up until this point, but I don't think it's looking likely right now. Um, other, unless they're just going to get there and then Sarek's going to turn around and be like, surprise, surprise you're you. captain. He's <laughs> there with a balloon and a party popper. Going, <laughs> Congratulations. <"Hey." laughs> um, I, think, I think what's likely to happen is it will be a brand new captain, but what they're going to do is like they'll, they'll start season two with a double episode like they did season one, and it'll be them helping out the Enterprise, and it'll be like, Oh, Burnham's done a great job. Maybe she'll be captain, or maybe Saru will be captain because he's proved himself um, mm. helping out the Enterprise. Mm. And then they'll just introduce a new captain anyway because they realise that neither of those characters are strong enough to sustain a second season. Yeah, and the show becomes a very different type of show if one of them is captain as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you're right. And and I think as well it will be a character previously not known to us at all because if if it then becomes a character we already know in the universe it then becomes too much of a like easter eggy thing and canon yeah. becomes an issue as well so the answer to this really is we've no idea except that it's going to be someone we we probably have never met before yeah canon's a mega issue at the mm. moment um the next question is what is going on with vok slash ash tyler mm. now I originally thought that's quite a pedestrian question, but the more I started thinking about it, the more I thought, what on earth are they doing with him? Mm. So uh, he's gone Mm. to be Laurel's right-hand thing. Mm. Um, Because he's he's (laughs) neither, is he? Such an official term. (laughs) He's not quite a Klingon, not not really a man. He's just just a... Yeah, Mm. that's the official word for it. Honestly, I have real issues with his character arc, or at least the conclusion of his character arc, Mm -hmm. because it just feels like the show puts so much work into the Tyler Vok theory. And I loved it, and a lot of people loved it, and it was great to just throw it away at the end. Like, it makes no sense to me that he would be Vok for a little bit for an exchange with Burnham so that she could be heartbroken. But then, you know, this thing would happen which meant that they had to get rid of the Vok element so he effectively became Tyler again but the damage was done. Because let's not forget that the body, you know, the body that's technically walking around is that of Vox, which was just changed. And the Tyler character was overlaid his personality and subconscious Mm. so if anything it feels like it would be easier to get rid of the Tyler element than the Vok element Mm -hmm. yet that's not what's happened and everything about what we were told about Vok and about the promotional material with the posters it all told us that Vok was a main character so we kind of expected him to come back towards the end and be Vok again and have this big thing and have a showdown maybe and it just didn't happen and I'm so disappointed and it's just left this Tyler character who yeah it's a bit of a I don't even know who he is anymore or what he's even going to be doing the thing that puzzles me most about it is is clearly uh, someone's told him yeah you can go go on off you go you're fine but he's uh, he's, he's basically a Klingon that looks like a human with an intimate working knowledge of Starfleet's most powerful top secret weapon, which is Discovery. And they've just said, all right, off you go. You can go off with Laurel. He also killed an officer. Yeah. Like, and obviously there are extenuating circumstances surrounding that, but it kind of warrants at least a discussion. Yeah. I mean, you might also want to keep him 
as an ambassador or as a as a guy who knows knows Kronos intimately and knows knows your enemy intimately. Mm. The fact that they just let him go is ludicrous. Part of me part of me wonders though if they've let him go because he is not Ash Tyler. You know, the Federation's Ash Tyler died, as far as we know, in that cell. So he might call himself Tyler and he might have Tyler's memories and he might have decided that he's going to be Tyler rather than Vogue. But he, for, as far as the Federation's concerned, he's not. So what authority do they have to detain him? Well, they don't, but it's a hell of a thing to give away just on the on a principle. Absolutely. I mean, that's a lot. Even yeah. for a Starfleet that's proven it, it was willing to blow up the planet of its enemies mm. and to, to survive, mm. the fact that they've like given away... Their most one of their most valuable assets as a principal that doesn't that doesn't ring true with me. Do they know though? Like, well, ask yourself, not. ask yourself how many people know about Tyler's true identity and what happened with Vogue. Like, the Emperor knows, but obviously she's not telling anyone. She's gone off somewhere, and like the crew of the Discovery knows, and Lorca knew, but again, so. I feel like Cornwell does know, but I can't recall a specific scene mm -hmm. where anyone actually told her. I mean, Burnham knows, but that's her whole confused morality again, isn't it? I mm. mean, if she was being, if she was being like mechanical Starfleet Burnham, she'd have said, "No, you've got to stay." Mm. But she was sort of being emotional Burnham and said, "All right, off you go." Mm. It's it's all very very strange. Plus, everyone like writes up reports after big missions and especially after something like this happens so it would kind of take everyone admit omitting all of the Tyler Vox stuff from all of their official Starfleet reports for the Federation not to know about his true identity mm -hmm. which again seems very unlikely. very unlikely so another question we have now that we've seen the finale is whatever happened to the Terran discovery Mm, it's something that's sort of swept away, really, isn't it? It's a it? bit of a pothole, if you ask me, because I expected to find out in the episode when they got back to their universe, you know, for Cornwell or someone to say, oh, that discovery that we thought was you to begin with has been causing so much bother and we had to destroy them, or, you know, they've sided with the Klingons. And we never got that, and now it's the end of the season and nobody's mentioned it again. But we do know that they swap places, so... Well, did they swap when they came back? I mean... Because oh. the timeline's out, right? And the only reason that the USS Discovery got back is because it blew up the Emperor's capital ship mm. and rode the wave back onto the mycelial network. Yeah. So the chances of them recreating that in the proper universe to send the ISS Discovery back, which didn't have spore technology on board because yeah. Stamets hadn't figured it out properly. Yeah. It's just, it's a whacking great plot hole. Mm. I think they're just sort of going, let's just forget about that. They're over there. Let's just leave it. You know, nothing to see here. It feels like a really big misstep, though, because they made such a point of saying that the two ships had swapped places. Even if, even if you accept that they might have switched back, through, you know, through whatever fluke of the universe which doesn't allow two of the same thing to exist at the same time, that I think there's still a question about what they got up to the entire time they were in the in the, our universe. Mm -hmm. You know, because they would have gone through the same thing that the USS Discovery went through, which is discovering where they were and how different the universe was. And they don't seem like the type of people to kind of just sit back quietly and just let things play out in because they were outnumbered. And when is it? I mean, that's really confusing because the, the Discovery comes back and by coming back, it advances nine months. Yeah. So... How does that even work? Does, does the ISS, like the Terran Discovery, suddenly find itself nine months in its own space? Yeah. It's weird. And if it didn't, that means that they spent nearly a year in a completely different universe getting up to who knows what. Mm -hmm. Unless the process of taking them back somehow advanced them nine yeah. months. But, but, we, but we don't know. Yeah. Like, the, there's so many questions about that that just were never resolved in this season. I think season two will find the wreckage of it somewhere. Maybe. And they'll go and explore Maybe it. they'll listen to this video and be like, ah, oh, oh, we forgot crap. about that. Oh, bloody we need, hell. We need to fix that. Okay, season two. <laughs> so the last big question I have is where has Emperor Giorgio gone? Again, uh, bizarre the, that Burnham just goes, <laughs> she essentially goes, I'll, uh, I'll see you later, Giorgio. Uh, 
don't do anything bad. Bye. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. and she just says, yeah, see you later. And this is the most dangerous character from, if not the, then one of the most dangerous dimensions in the whole Star Trek universe. Yeah. So she's just gone, see you later, don't be bad, or I'll come and find you, and mm. you'll have to confront me again, and you'll be all emotionally confused. She won't be emotionally confused. Yeah. She's going to do as many bad things as possible as yeah. quickly as possible. I'm surprised that Giorgio didn't just turn around and laugh in her face, to be honest, when she said that, because it's sort of like asking a a leopard to change its spots. Like, mm -hmm. of course she's going to do bad things. Like, she maybe won't be terrible. It'll probably be quite hard for her to take over the whole universe with no support, but she's definitely going to be up to no good. In terms of where she's going, though, the only thing I can think of is that maybe she's going to go and try and find the Terran Discovery, because if that's, like, missing and perhaps still in that universe, that would be, you know, a good place to start for her, because at least there'd be other Terrans. Not sure how much damage she could do, but if the ship was still mm. intact, you know, she could captain that ship. She's just going to smash as much ship, shit up as possible, I think. I, ju I, I just know, think like, she's going to just acquire as much power as she can. Yeah. She's good at that. She knows how to do it. I'd go more for the acquiring power than the smashing shit up because she's yeah. not, she's obviously very intelligent. Like, she maybe she's going to, like, kind of gather all kind of smugglers and criminals to her side and create this little empire on a planet somewhere that she rules over and just be content with, you know, a slightly smaller empire in this universe. Mm. Uh, she's going to be back though, right? Season yeah. two, she'll be in it somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Okay, those are the questions we have after watching Star Trek Discovery Season 1. If you have any questions, then let us know in the comments below. Uh, thanks for listening, and there are loads more Star Trek Discovery features and opinion pieces on Games Radar.